guys, it's Sam and today I'm doing my summer in review. I do not do monthly favorites videos because I do not use enough new products every month. I do not buy enough new products every month, but I do have favorites seasonally. I tend to change my interests in makeup and hair and whatever skin seasonally, so this works out better for me. I will leave my previous ones from different seasons linked down below. So this time around I have mostly beauty with some hair stuff, I don't think any skin stuff, and then I have a little bit of life stuff, and I do break it down into favorites, things that I loved, things that were kind of in between, and things that I didn't like. My biggest beauty favorite of the season was gel nail polish and my at-home gel nail polish kit. So I have wanted to have nice nails for a while. I am a big like nail biter sometimes or like picker and my nail polish, normal nail polish, flakes off like nobody's business. It chips within a day no matter what I do, no matter how careful I am, no matter what techniques I try, no matter what nail polish I use and I have a lot of nail polish, just traditional nail polish, it didn't matter. So I was getting really discouraged and I hadn't been painting my nails really at all in the last like couple of years. And then I went and got a gel nail polish manicure at a salon, like, right at the beginning of the summer. And I kind of fell in love with it, but I didn't want to invest the money every month to do that. Like, I just wanted basic polished nails, not like nail art or anything crazy and anything like that. So I decided to invest in my own at-home gel nail polish kit. So I invested in the Red Carpet Manicure gel nail polish kit. It's available at Ulta. I think it's also available on Amazon and a few other places. I got mine from Amazon. And it's fairly inexpensive. It pretty much pays for itself. I think most people, you'd go to the salon twice and it would be paid for, and I've used it more times than that, definitely. So it comes with this LED lamp as well as one nail polish color. It's just red. And then the prep, the base coat, the top coat, and the like nail polish remover and stuff like that. So it comes with pretty much everything you need to start out. And then I also went out to my local Sally's and got a few other gel nail polishes. So I got a few from Gelish, the brand Gelish, and I've really been liking those. So I've been painting my nails using that. It stays on me for three weeks, almost a month, I think the last time. It was starting to chip a little bit, but not chip where you get one chip and then everything just falls apart. Like it'll just chip in one place, maybe, and then that's pretty much my own error and I really just repaint my nails because of growth and seeing the growth. So I did these myself. They're not professional obviously but this is just my nails. So gel nail polish for those of you that don't know is not any kind of like acrylic or binder. Like this is my nail and it just has polish on top. It's not anything yeah. extra. So I've been really liking the like almond shaped nails that I did do myself and I also use the gelish matte top coat on this and I'm loving it. So I love that my nails are stronger with this because I tend to have kind of weak nails and I just I keep them polished so it doesn't matter and I, they always just look nice now and it's really great. The second thing I've really been loving is the Benefit Gimme Brow and I use the is it two? Okay three and this is a brow volume gel. So it has a little wand like this which is very small and that's basically why I got it. It only comes in three different shades but they're kind of universally shades. I think this is the second to darkest one possibly. I'm not sure. But this just adds kind of volume to your brows. It fills in a little bit. Like I don't have particularly sparse brows but it kind of fills in your brows very naturally. So I also use the Anastasia Brow Wiz pencil that I've used for years. So I use that kind of under to kind of shape under and down and kind of create a tail because my brows stop a little bit farther up. Not horribly bad, but a little bit. And then I use this to fill it in. I for a long time was using the Anastasia brow gel. I do not like that. The wand is huge in comparison to this. This is nice and tiny for any size brow. Just for comparison's sake, this is the Anastasia brow one, which is huge. Like, look at that. Look at how big that is. Like, I would get it everywhere. And this kind of almost has a shimmer to it. I don't know if that's still the case because I got this a long time ago. It was almost like a shimmer to it. It just, it never looked good. It dr like dried really crusty almost, like normal gel, like hair stuff would. And then this is a small one and it's small. It just, it looks nice and I really appreciate it. My last favorite is probably really obvious if you've been watching my videos lately. I've gotten really into bright eyeshadow. I used to be really into bright eyeshadow and then I just kind of left it behind, but my biggest hits beauty-wise this month are sugar pill eyeshadows. So I previously owned this one, which is the Heartbreaker palette, and this is a quad, so it has these four shades in it. And I really love these, I would use these over and over, but I wanted more. And then I heard that Sugar Pill was releasing their Pro palette. This is a 12 pan magnetic pro palette. So they sell their eyeshadows just as pans now, and you can build your own eyeshadow palette 
it's beautiful. So I got to buy the shades that I didn't already own because I obviously already had these, so I didn't want to buy a Pro Palette that already had the shades that I already had. They're huge. You're never going to go through all of them. And I got to customize my own. They also have like a sale kind of going on with these, so if you buy a certain amount of the eyeshadows, you get the palette for free. You don't have to pay for the palette, which is wonderful. So that's what I did, and I just got all of mine in one go. I... These are all of the shades that I got. They are so beautiful. I wear them all the time now. I use a lot of the shades for like inner corner highlights with like a smoky eye just to make them more fun. This black is the blackest black I have ever seen. I really also love this red. Red eyeshadow is really hard to do and this one's done really well. Even this purple, which purple eyeshadows are again really hard to do without making them patchy is beautiful like it's again it's not completely perfect necessarily but it's so good and this white is really good like I have super fair skin obviously so this white is good as a highlight or like even a blending color they're so gorgeous if you guys are interested in me actually listing out which eyeshadows are which because I have to like take them out of the pan I don't want to do it right now but if you want me to list these then I can definitely do that like I know some of them on the top of my head but not all of them so I don't want to get any of them wrong um, so if you let me know that you want that I will list it either in the comments or in the description box so definitely let me know and I do plan on doing looks with these like with all of these eyeshadows i've been playing around with them a lot and i do plan doing some looks i might even do some looks based on book covers if you guys are interested in that let me know I, i'm gonna do it regardless but if you guys are interested in like certain covers that you want to like request i have a list of ones that i think i want to do but if you want to request like this would be really cool for a look like let me know and i'll try to add that to like the repertoire so i'm definitely gonna do some stuff with this these are the most beautiful eyeshadows I have ever experienced. I've used MAC eyeshadows, I've used Urban Decay, I've used Makeup Geek, I've used Tarte. And Makeup Geek I really love a lot, but these are beautiful. And they're so bright and so pigmented, and I'm never going to run out of them because they're so huge. It's blessed. And then I have a little bit of an in-between category for beauty, and that is the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipsticks. I actually have four of them, but one of them is in my purse. I own Mannequin, Celebrity Skin, Abuse, and Unicorn Blood. And these formulas, like the product itself is amazing. I love the packaging for these. Honestly, I know some people think it's really cheap. I just think it's really cute. I, they're really sturdy and you definitely can see the color and everything. And then I love the doe foot applicator on these. It has that little groove in there that fits your lips perfectly and makes it so easy. And then it also has a formula that is really easy to spread. It doesn't get crumbly. They stay on through almost anything. Any liquid lipstick is going to obviously like fade or crumble off if you eat like oily food or something like that but these stay on super well you can also reapply them and they don't go bad or anything like they don't pill up and get gross and chunky they're wonderful the problem is Jeffree Star is trash a lot of things that come out about him that obviously I don't need to go into everyone's talked about it but at this point I don't feel comfortable supporting his business I just love the product so much and the lipsticks are also vegan cruelty free which is wonderful and amazing and I like to support those kinds of brands and that kind of product if I can and his is my favorite liquid lipstick I've ever used. I've used the Anastasia Beverly Hills which I do really like those as well and I've used the Colourpop and I also have a Kat Von D one now but this is the best formula and I love the colors and I've not been disappointed by the product at all. I just don't support the person who started the company and whose money I would be supporting if I would continue to buy his lipsticks and it hurts me. My beauty hate for the season is more of a skincare hate and that is I am pretty much having to reset my entire skincare. I have done videos about my Asian skincare routine and I am going to actually do an upcoming video on my empties, things that I have used up since I started my Asian skincare routine. I have a whole box of stuff, stuff that I loved, but since coming off chemo my skin has kind of changed. I don't know if it's gone back to how it was before because I'm, I didn't think it was this bad before and it's not bad obviously. I actually used to have really chronic cystic acne a few years back and I went on Accutane for it back then. I'll do a whole video if you guys want about my like skin journey kind of if you want to hear about that but my skin is just kind of freaking out a little bit like things aren't working like they used to and my skin was looking beautiful on chemo weirdly enough like your skin actually looks pretty good on chemo because chemo just like kills everything bad so it kills a lot of like acne and stuff like that it's like the only good thing about it and once I got off it my skin started kind of like not reacting to anything necessarily but it just I think maybe started going back to normal like it's still the same texture as far as like it's a little bit normal dry now as I've gotten older but I'm getting a lot more texture you can see I have like a zit hanging out over there which I haven't had like a zit like a white head in a while and I have some more like I have a lot of blackheads around here for some reason 
and I never used to have that. So I've kind of reset my whole routine, gone down to just a cleanser and a moisturizer just to see if I can kind of reset, clear everything out and kind of restart. I don't know though. I'm gonna talk to my doctor and see if I can do anything else, um, not just skincare related, but yeah, it's really frustrating because all these products that I tested out, that I tested for two weeks at a time, made sure they didn't break me out, all this stuff, I basically have to reset and kind of get rid of those results because I don't know if that works for my current skin, so it's super frustrating. But I'm gonna have future skincare videos coming up and stuff, and there's a lot of products that I really miss that I hope I can work back into my routine that don't negatively affect my skin or anything, but yeah, between the skin on my face and even the skin on like my shoulders and stuff is getting like more textured, and ugh, it's super frustrating. As far as hair, I don't really have a lot. I'm still experimenting around with my hair. I'm actually getting a haircut coming up this weekend, so by the time this video goes up, I might have different hair than I have right now, but I'm trying to get used to styling it short and everything, and I've gone through a couple different products and whatever, but I decided that I finally needed a nice hair dryer. I'm still working with my natural texture for the most part. Obviously, you can see that I haven't really done anything today with it differently, but there are times when I do kind of tend to blow dry it and control it in a different direction, so I knew I needed a better hair dryer, and kind of moving forward, I have to more experiment with messing with my texture because this kind of hair doesn't work for kind of what I want it to look like. Like my curly hair isn't something that I can necessarily work with for the look that I want. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. But I did invest in a nice hair dryer and this isn't super expensive or anything. I got it at Ulta. It's a Hot Tools Turbo Ceramic and it has this type. It has a like pick type of attachment and it has the um, diffuser for curly hair. So it has everything on it. And then it has two settings for speed, three for heat, and the cool shot. And this works awesome. Like I had a really old Vidal Sassoon hair dryer that my mom gave me like back in high school maybe and that one barely dried hair and it took forever. This is beautiful and awesome and it works so nice and I don't feel like it's damaging my hair. I am using a heat protectant, but even without that, I don't feel like it would be super damaging to my hair and I love it. My hair dries a lot faster when I do use it and it's great. My only hair hate this month is something that I actually already returned and it is from AG Cosmetics and it's the AG Cosmetics Texture Paste. I was looking for something to give my hair a little bit of obviously texture. I'm trying to do like a faux hockey kind of style and I like to have it kind of like stick up a little bit but not be like the gelled awful like you know that guy used to do in like high school so I was looking for something that kind of provides the hold but also kind of makes it more PC and I tried that AG Cosmetics is a cruelty free brand and I've been wanting to try their stuff forever because they do have a curly hairline anyway and I tried it and I hated it it was so sticky like you would rub your hands together and it would just like stick and it wouldn't like stick and be kind of like sticky that you can use it to make it PC it like wouldn't do anything and you'd have to like almost rub it into your hair it did not work at all for what I wanted it to work for and I'm actually using a different thing. I'm just kind of trying it out from AG Cosmetics and it's the next step up and hold and it's like so much nicer. It's actually a molding cream which I didn't think I would have liked but it is like a creamier but like still sticky texture and it works a ton better but I do not recommend at all the texturizing paste. Like it just, it did not work whatsoever. Now I'm gonna move on to the life stuff and I've also had a pretty good summer. The dog has been amazing. Tally, she's so big. I should probably go like get her. I'll probably try to get her at the end and show you. But she's so cute and so wonderful and we're just trying to train her. There's still things we need to do with her. She just got over her spay and we're gonna do some more training with her. Like she's a good dog now, but if we stop now, she'd just be like an average still kind of misbehaving sometimes dog and I want to get her like really good. I want her to eventually be a therapy dog so I can take her to like retirement homes and hopefully um, chemotherapy centers to be like the companion dogs and like so people can like pet her. She loves people to like pet her or, like while they're going through treatment. If I would have had that, that would have been amazing. So I'm hoping to do that with her. So she's great. But my biggest thing of the summer and of my entire life really has been the Mass Effect trilogy. I'm doing a playthrough with a group of friends and we're doing live shows on my other channel, hashtag Space Squad. And I'm replaying the trilogy and it's so good. Like I've loved it forever, obviously, but it's really gotten to the point where it's consuming my life. Like I think when I'm done, I'm going to write some fan fiction for it. Like that's how it's gotten. I've just been so obsessed with all the characters and getting to see them again and meet them again and play through. And I've this is like my perfect playthrough for the most part. There's like only one thing that I wish would have done differently. But other than that, like it's perfect. Everything I've wanted to do with it. And it's so nice to just relive that and meet those characters. And like I have a shipper heart and the shipping that I can do. Like I'm way too invested in it. I've been listening to Telescope by Starset 
which is a really great song for Mass Effect and Space Children and Your Babies. Like I've been thinking of Shepard and Garrus to that song and like borderline bed in tears like some nights. It's not necessarily healthy, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And I cannot wait. I'm going to, when we finish the trilogy, which is hopefully going to be soon, three will be done with hopefully, I think this month sometime, maybe, maybe beginning of October. So once we finish that, I'm going to start playing the Dragon Age games, which I've never played. I've tried to play Origins, but I couldn't get into it. I'm going to actually start with two and play two in Inquisition, and I'm really excited for that. But my other Mass Effect thing is, you know, connected, because it's a Mass Effect thing. I got this shirt for my birthday, and it's from Society6, and it has Femshep, and I should go. And she looks so good. <laughs> I've been wearing this constantly. Like, I, I pretty much wear it almost every day. It's so comfortable. It's like a really comfortable v-neck shirt. I think this is a unisex v-neck, and I will link the artist down below about this. It's so nice, and I wish that we had every single character available from this store, because I would buy them. Like, I really want one of Garrus. I might need to request it, to be honest. Like, I'm so obsessed. I've had multiple conversations with people who've seen me wearing this shirt and are also Mass Effect fans, and we talk about it, and it's beautiful, like, finding your crew. It's it's amazing. And I'm also getting very emotional about a lot of Mass Effect Andromeda information that's coming out, because that's going to come out early next year. And I'm so ready. Like, I have enough time to play the Dragon Ages in the time that I'm waiting, and then Andromeda will be in my hands, and I'm fully intending to take some days off work so I can play it nonstop. I can't wait. My in-between thing for the summer is actually Pokemon Go. Like, I was obsessed with it when it first came out. I was really excited. I played Pokemon when I was younger. I wasn't a complete super fan by any means, but I had Pokemon Yellow for the Game Boy, and then I played Pokemon Stadium on the N64, and I also had the training cards, and I really loved it. And I loved First Generation because that's what I grew up on. So I was playing it, really loving it. I loved it at the beginning. I still loved it through a lot of the changes that they made. I do follow a couple of like Pokemon Go YouTube channels, but it's just kind of the way where I'm kind of just like, uh, about it. And especially I think it's because of where I live. I don't live in a particularly big town. I have to drive to Pokestops and Pokestop area. And then the Pokemon that spawn in that area aren't that good for me. They're just normal basic. And it's gotten like not that fun at all. Like I drove by actually the place where all the Pokestops are in my town tonight. And there should be plenty of people there. And there's like no one. And it's just sad because for a while there, like I was going out and like talking to people and like walking around and doing a ton of walking and meeting people. And there's a ton of people down in that area. So I could go even late at night and it'd be totally fine. And it's not that anymore. And there is a part of my state that has a lot of stops and a lot of really good Pokemon. But it's like an hour away. So now that I've experienced that place, which is amazing and I want to keep going back to and I'll continue to play the game. Like I continue to play the game like when I'm walking the dog and stuff or if I go to that part of the state. But since it's such like a hassle not to do, it's kind of taken the fun away. I'm sure people that are in big cities are still really enjoying it because they have so much more available to them. But I've just gotten to the point where it's not as fun and it's really sad. Like I'm, I'm going to continue to play just not as hardcore as I was. You know, continue to do hatching eggs on walks and stuff like that. But it's just not as fun as it was at the beginning and it's, it's sad. So that is it for my summer review. Comment down below and let me know some of the things that you've been enjoying this summer. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all you guys soon.